Welcome, everybody, to the N-Word for Nerd podcast. We are coming to you very quickly and early because we have a heavy, heavy week this weekend. So instead of just only focusing on a few things, we figure we try to give you all the things and just do it all throughout the rest of the week. So we will still have our show normally debuting on Tuesday, so no worries there. But we decided because uh, it's Marvel and we do special things for Marvel because they do special things to us in our hearts and our souls in other places for some weird people that cosplay. (laughs) Yes, so go with that. Cosplay is not weird. It's fun. It makes you feel like a billion dollars when you do it right. No, you could dress up as Marvel characters and do weird things with... Anyway, uh, (laughs) so... (laughs) Going to, as always, I have my host here, Jaron the Token White Guy. What's going on, Jaron? Hey, guys. How's it going? Good to see everybody. And then we have Duke of All Nerds. What's going on, Duke? Doing doing good. And we don't see anybody besides the three of us. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. So we're going to jump into this and we're going to start off with doing a spoiler free conversation about the what if Marvel episode one. And then we will let you know at what point we're going to jump into spoilers. And then that way, if you don't want to hear spoilers, Rico, yes, I'm talking to you, my friend Rico, (laughs) then you can turn it off and don't worry about it until you watch it and come back. All right, guys, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Let's Jaren, what are your thoughts on what if episode? Oh, sorry, my recap. This what if takes place when I basically switching out. Captain America Steve Rogers with Peggy Carter being the super getting a super soldier serum and becoming Captain Carter and basically showing her way through World War II with some similarity to similarities to Captain America's story. So going from there, Jaron, what are your thoughts on what if episode one? Uh so everything starts, and I was a little worried based just initially on the visuals. I was like, oh no, they're gonna do the tune shader, they're gonna, they're gonna that that's generally a sign that they didn't want to pay somebody to do actual texture and lighting work. Um, so I'm like, uh Oh, corner cutting. <laughs> um, and then I was, I, I mean, I, man, I tell you what, I was overly impressed with the smoothness of the animation. Like these guys absolutely. I mean, it feels like they, they dipped into the Disney talent pool to, uh, to do the animation uh, in this um the story itself is fantastic without spoiling anything uh it it does kind of run super parallel to how we saw the captain america first avenger kind of roll out um and the amount of original voice cast they were able to grab back from that uh is impressive there were a couple notable absences but um (laughs) then when you then you know i mean getting uh getting old boy back to play howard stark and him just falling right back into the role was fantastic and i appreciated it so yeah overall i was uh i was worried uh my worries were laid dressed and i enjoyed it immensely all right jason your thoughts yeah i like this too um as i said with with what jaron said I was a little bit worried about the, the kind of the art direction in this at first. And, you know, there's definitely like on the smaller scenes where the animation is a little bit herky, but they definitely um, spend the money in the action portion. The action is so nice. The backgrounds are beautiful. Like it looks like those are hand drawn, freaking painted backgrounds. Everything like really, really blends together very well. Um, yeah, it's great that they had, they got pretty much everybody from uh, the Avengers with the exception of uh, Chris Evans to come back to your, to reprise their voices because I guess they need money and Chris Evans doesn't anymore. <laughs> but yeah, Hugh, yeah. Hugh Weaving didn't come back because they replaced him with, yeah. with uh, Nate. I want to say Mark Hart, but that's a, probably a, a fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, other than that, like for one of the, uh, I guess the the uh, biggest, I guess downgrades for me is that they basically are trying to cover a movie's worth of story in a thirty minute show. Um, without getting into spoilers, they pretty much almost hit for you know the major plot points and uh it just felt a little bit rushed because it, i mean like it's, they're trying to fit it all in so other than that you know it was really still really good yeah no i i definitely i guess i'm gonna keep going on the train of yeah i enjoyed this too uh to give a deeper <laughs> analysis into it uh captain america first avenger is one of my favorite marvel movies i'm a huge fan of uh joe johnson and I mean, even back to the Rocketeer and all that. So I do always like those styles of movies. The best thing I can say about this, what if, is that all the negatives I had about Captain America, the first Avenger, I feel like somebody must have heard those negatives and was like, oh, well, 
we'll give them those things. Because my biggest negative with Captain America and the First Avenger is all the cool stuff in the movie, they don't show. They kind of montage through. Like, yeah. in this one, they can't, they show it. They don't montage through it. So I thought that was really dope uh, to see some of the events play out from that point of view. I do love the moment where they, the Nexus moment, where they make the comment of, like, at this point, it spawns off to, I thought that was really, really dope, uh, kind of laying it flat like that. Also, I did enjoy how it ended and where they put the character at the end of the, of the show, because now it makes me feel like maybe this character may possibly show up in other things and other properties, or could Marvel do, I hate to say, steal something from DC <laughs> and do how like DC did Joker, where it doesn't connect to their universe. Could they start making films or cartoons or something that doesn't connect to their main story, main line, and do this? Only thing I realized, because after I thought that, I figured I'd do some research and realize that evidently it's come out that these things are technically canon, but what if canon, alternate universe canon? So that kind of dashed a little bit because I know how Marvel and Kevin Feige are about their canon stuff. They, <laughs> if, they if, if it doesn't do well, it gets erased from memory. <laughs> it's Shield, not canon Netflix. if it doesn't do well. Right. <laughs> Or it is canon. We'll just never speak of it ever again. <laughs> right, right. Ag Agents of Shield. Anyone? Oh, uh, Sebastian said was god awful in this. <laughs> yeah. Everything that he read sounded terrible, as if yeah. no one had showed him anything of what was going on. And was like, "Hey, read these lines, and we'll." Give he did you it on a weekend. And he was like, <laughs> "Yeah." He was like, "Okay, um, let's go." How much you paid me for this? <laughs> Steve, I got it. Can I have, can I have my check now? Because I <laughs> yeah. felt like he was god awful. Um, that's my own real criticism of the voice work is that. It just yeah. felt like everything he did was just separate from everything else that was going on. It and felt phoned in. Yeah, it definitely did. Yes. Well, guys, we talked about that. It is at nine minutes and 24 seconds. This is the point where we're going to go into spoilers. So if you do not like want to hear spoilers, please pause it or turn it off. Go watch it. And then come back and then we continue the process. I'm going to give you, yes, <laughs> Jason gave us a countdown. So we're at one. <laughs> we're going to jump fully into it, guys. All right, let's go into spoilers here for it. Um, I'm just going to jump off the bat and say that I absolutely, 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 absolutely mm -hmm. love the idea thought process that got dashed away from me that Steve Rogers will come back as the Winter Soldier. Um, mm -hmm. When he fell off the cliff, I was like, oh, hopefully I was, they I separated from the thing. machine. He gets frozen away. They give him a version of Super Serum for down they the line. Wouldn't, they wouldn't use that become, dude, though. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I knew they couldn't have like throw this guy away. <laughs> that was I knew they couldn't have done that because they were already cramming one movie into 20 minutes, and I knew they couldn't cram another movie into it. So. Blown spoilers. Um, yes, like I said, the, the battles that we saw in montage, I got to see we got to see those battles pretty much fully fleshed out, which I thought was really, really dope. Also, does it was it just me or did did Captain Carter's like did she feel like she was stronger than Steve? Yeah, like she was doing like, stuff that like I was like. Steve. Like, she stopped a drop with her bare hands, man. <laughs> like, right, thinking right. of car stuff. Like only thing Steve did was rip off a car door. I, I guess the the helicopter thing in Winter Soldier, or was it Winter Soldier where he grabs the helicopter? Uh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That's pretty strong, but like yeah. she, she, yeah, she was. <laughs> I don't know. I, I would, I would chalk it up to her just being a little more creative with it, or having yeah. more rage for being a woman in that era. She was definitely more uh, about that life than Steve was to begin with. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, we can go murder people now? Let's yeah, do it. She was about ready. She was like ready to crack heads. <laughs> also, I wanted to point that out too because I think when we talked about Falcon and uh, Winter Soldier or a Black Captain American and Winter Soldier, we talked about the whole, you know, death and killing people in Captain America. And remember, that was my point. I'm like, Captain America could kill tons of people. Well, yeah, Captain like, Carter put that to rest because Captain Carter <laughs> gave two fucks. She was <laughs> yeah. slaughtering guys like it was nothing, like nobody's yeah. business. Remember the dude in the airplane? She hits him in the face with the shield three times, like, <laughs> which if this was an already cartoon, he would have been splattering everywhere. Like, oh, yeah. she I gave think there's no a fucks. difference, though, between like killing people in war and then, kill I mean, everybody likes to kill Nazis. I mean, like, come on, right, that's, that, right. that's the, the get out of jail free type of people you can kill and not feel bad right. about it. <laughs> but, like, I guess I guess the only question I had to was this the nexus point of splitting is this gonna be the point that splits out to all the other what if universes or is this just in its own pocket? I think multiverse these episodes man. are supposed to be connected. 
Are they? I think That's so. That's what I'm saying. I feel like the Watcher made it feel that because, way. He was like, this one spawned other universes. Like, I feel like he was making it seem like that was the point. In other, uh, in previews for other episodes, Agent Carter or Captain Carter shows up like that, especially with the one with the zombie, um, zombie, zombie Captain America. She actually yeah. fights him. So I think this, these are all supposed to be connected, but here, who knows? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I, Which I just make sense how it ended. Yeah. 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 They definitely dump her into, I mean, it seemed like the prime universe. Well, it's just a, the modern day era of that universe, maybe. It looked like it looked like Barton and Sam Jackson were in the same uh, the same facility that they were testing the Tesseract in, in Avengers One. Yeah, that's where. It but like instead of Loki through. coming through the portal, it was Captain Carter. So they even say like, "Put the sword down." Like in the uh, yeah. Avengers One, he's like, "Put the scepter down or the spear down or whatever." Yeah. So mm-hmm. like, there was a mirror of that those two scenes. Yeah. So I would assume they're in a different universe. Where there's a Captain Carter and not the mainline MCU verse, because that would be hard to explain to people. Like, oh yeah, hey Steve, you know how you should have went back in time and to date your girlfriend? Well, there she is over there with superpowers too. Yeah. How could uh, you guess you have the rough sex? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to be so gentle anymore. <laughs> yeah, no holding back, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Red Skull's plan here. Like, <laughs> is he a moron? <laughs> or, yeah. or like, what? It's like, I'm going to open a dimension. He's going to be our champion. Like, did you talk to him first? Did you ask yeah. him if he wanted to do that? Like, he's you got what you Saturday, yeah, It was a very <laughs> like, Saturday morning cartoon villain plot right there. Like, we'll just get a monster here and control it somehow. Because, I mean, we're Nazis and we control <laughs> monsters. So it's kind of our thing. Did you figure out how to control the monster first? Nah, first? we'll get it in. We'll get it in here first. <laughs> Details. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. I mean, the guy doesn't have a, a face, so I'm pretty yeah. sure he was very confident in his ability to tame any beast. And then it um, turned into some hentai porn. I was like, oh, no. Yeah, there was definitely <laughs> Well, and I guess, too, that it, 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 I guess this is now officially going to be the thing in this Marvel Universe. Like, hey, let's get one of the most badass villains and just, like, disregard him easily every <laughs> time. Murder. Because, you know. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's like, uh, because, you know, reasons. I mean, what if? So. <laughs> right. What if but Red Skull was yeah. a practitioner, yeah. uh, you know, super yeah. genius? What if he was just a moron yeah, and summon a monster that killed him right away? <laughs> I like, I like the Starks, so I was super excited to see more Howard running around. I yeah. did think it was a bit of a, I mean, it was executed well, but it was, it was, it wasn't in keeping with the story that he would somehow create an Iron Man suit before his son <laughs> had the inspiration for it. Um, but he didn't have the Tesseract until after the war, though. Yeah, so I don't know if <laughs> maybe. I, I, I thought that but, one, that one was kind of like it. where this is a sports reference. I would have thrown the flag on that one, the the, the Stark thing. I mean, <laughs> Tony built his because of the situation he was in. It wasn't like Tony was sitting around thinking, right. "Man, I just want like a suit of armor exactly. that I could fly in, that could shoot me." Like he built that suit because it was like protection against bullets when he decided to make his escape, like. Tony's father had no reason to make that suit. Like, no, no. reason to want to make an armored suit. Like, no. <laughs> if anything, he would have made a better, uh, another better, uh, like, plane or some crap like that. Like, yeah, I yeah. do think that, like, Dominic Cooper sounded like he was having fun doing Harley Stark. He, Star and he and sounded like he was, was he was there for this whole entire project. He was yeah, it, having yeah. a good time. <laughs> it was, it was okay. contagious. I also, yeah, who, who makes a blue button? <laughs> <laughs> I did enjoy the uh, the fight scene in, in the air with the planes. I thought I, I, that was one of the scenes. I was like, I wish this was actually in a movie. Yeah, like, I wish this was Captain America Four. We're calling you. Like, <laughs> I don't even if you recreate it in live action with like watching a maybe a, a movie of uh, Captain Carter or something. I don't know. Figure it out. Make that scene live action because that was just dope. Like, <laughs> dude, when she like, goes through the bomber and yeah. through the like the gunner windshield and jumps out and takes out of oh my god, it was so awesome. I was like, you those guys are all you're, yeah. uh, you're a fan of the Rocketeer, Jason. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> it, had, it had Rocketeer-like DNA throughout it almost. The way oh, there was the aerial movements and everything. Yeah, I think it, I guess the only negative I would have is what you guys kind of pointed out. It It's very hard. And it, well, I don't know why you're doing this in 30 or 33 minutes. Like, you, this is your programming. You could have made yeah. this as long as you wanted it to. And really, really kind of – it almost – and I know it is exactly doing this, but I hate this when stories or people do this. Like it's relying on the fact that we know 
the real history and timeline so that we accept what's going on. Because if I had no, let's say if I were to pull somebody in and go, hey, watch this because it's Marvel and everybody's so popular right now, and they would just jump into the seat and watch it, they would have no idea what's going on, why is this important, or why should they care? And I think that's the biggest issue with this is like it banks heavily on the fact that you got to know everything before you can just walk into this. And I always think that's kind of quasi bad storytelling when you're saying, oh, look at the other thing before you can watch this thing because you don't know the other thing. You won't understand the story we're telling. So, yeah, there's definitely, yeah. You definitely I mean, need yes to do you know, your homework think, first. Though. <laughs> yeah, I think I think Marvel had to make a conscious or, you know, Feige had to make a, con a conscious decision at some point going we are building upon building stories upon stories upon stories. Um, there is no way we could put a movie out under three hours where we want to tell the new story, but we have to do a recap at the beginning. <laughs> so every single time, I think he was just like, we're just going to have to, we're going to make the assumption you've, you've been on this trip, you know, this uh, trip with us and, and go from there. I, I mean, I, I can't imagine somebody going, I'm going to check this Marvel thing out. And the first thing they do is check out what if on Disney plus. Yeah. At this point, you either have been watching these movies for the past, you know, 10, 15 years, yeah. or you haven't and you don't give a shit. <laughs> right. And if you still, and then I will say, I would counter that to say, we watch a ton of things that we love and admire that are basically made for anybody to walk into and get it. Batman animated series was not serialized. Yeah. You could walk into any episode of Batman animated series and it told a complete story that, like, let's be completely honest, all these stories didn't even need Batman to be Batman. They were good stories without it. It just made it better because Batman is Batman. Like sure. it could have been a detective trying to solve these murders or crimes. And so, like when I say that, that's what I think about it when I go that route is that what if can do that? What if can be individualized with the overarching series that allows people to walk into these things and the story is good enough that you have told a story and make it work with this one. If you don't know the other stuff, this story makes no sense. Because they skip over a lot of stuff because they assume you know what happened right. in the main timeline. And they so that's my argument movie. against that. They I get what you're saying, saying, Jason, but also with this, it's like the, this show is like the only reason anybody would care about the show is because it's different from the thing that we already yeah. know, right? By, by its <laughs> very like, nature. It's, 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 it's fundamental like core concept is that it's built in on all these other stories and they're just doing it differently. So it would be kind of hard to do this sort of series without you know having people watch the stuff beforehand because they it, it, there would be no context for any of this and to, to, to do it over again uh it would be kind of hard to do a series like this where you just don't kind of like have to not make yeah. reference to the stuff that has already come because this it's the whole concept is that this is different from that movie so right I, yeah we we I talked mean, about voice casting and we all three blew past the one person that I, I wanted to talk about because I forgot about his name, but Jeffrey Wright as the watcher. Oh, yes, as the watcher. Yeah. Yes. Nailed it mm. in every way possible. The the scientist guy from Westworld, killing it, killing it. Jeffrey Wright. It. Yes. Um, he's in a lot of shit. He was in well, yeah, Casino Royale. Movie. He's in a lot yeah. of Bond movies. He's uh, he's Jeffrey fucking Wright. He was I can let Shaft. that guy talk to me about the phone book, and I'm just like, yes. Mentoring <laughs> candidate. Yeah. Uh, and Yeah, uh, no. Apparently he's, he's uh, Commissioner Gordon in the new Batman movie. Yes, 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 yes. That hasn't come out yet with with Batterson trailer. <laughs> Bat what or is it? What are we what are we saying for Robert Patterson's Batman? Robert Bat Pat Patter Batter Robert Batterson. Batterson. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Or, no, it's Patman. It's, it's Patman. <laughs> Any closing words on what if <laughs> episode I'm one for next week's? Did uh, they say what is it going to be? Uh, no, but I'm there. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm sure, it'll be good. It, it's all going to be a random, you know, what if. So, yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, Jason, any thoughts on any final thoughts? I got to watch if? Titans after this, and my heart hurts. Ooh, are you going to buckle up? Because <laughs> I know how you, to? the venom. That I you have about to. Titans. I, 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 I hate myself on the inside. So I, I must say, who hurt you, Jason? <laughs> oh, I'm going to watch Titans too. Don't get it twisted, but. I have I enjoy Titans a lot more than Jason enjoys Titans. So. I have given up on shows <laughs> that I liked way better than this. <laughs> so why are you sticking around? <laughs> because it's, uh, it's Teen Titans. I gotta be here. Right. <laughs> They're my favorites. Teen. I've got to be here. I don't just go watch Teen Titans. Go to the movies again. That shit was dope. <laughs> 
Well, that ends another quick hitting episode of the, the N Word for Nerd podcast. Please check us out on all our social medias Facebook, YouTube. <laughs> Uh, like and subscribe. Follow us uh, if you listen to the whole podcast. We're on all DSPs, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, iTunes. We're everywhere that you want to be. And we, if we're not there, let us know because we'll be we'll, we'll find a way to get there as well. Um, any closing remarks? Anything you want to say to anybody, uh, Jaren? Uh, no. I'm. Uh, what if was great. I'm excited about the rest of the series and. Uh, I'm sorry that I made you guys watch that Monster Hunter movie because, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, we haven't watched it yet, so I'm good. Uh, <laughs> Jason, Jason number A. Just be kind and tip your servers and bartenders 20%. All right. We will see you all. I, I, I always say see you all next week, but I guess technically it'll be next week, but yeah, it'll be a few days. We'll see you <laughs> in a few days. See you soon. <laughs> we'll see you on the next all one. Right. <laughs>